The speed at which money moves through your economy is its velocity. The technical term or the technical definition of velocity is the number of times the average dollar is spent over the course of a year. And don't ask me how this is estimated, but there are mathematical formulas to try to figure that out. We want money to move through the economy because if it's not moving or if it's going too slowly, we get an economy like the one we have today where we have, you know, we're, we're creeping up on 10% unemployment. It's going to happen pretty soon. All right. So what happens if money does not move? Let's say, for example, that people are not buying goods and services and businesses start to see their inventories building up. That's a bad sign. We saw that happen prior to the Great Depression. We've seen that happen prior to every recession we've had, pretty much ever. When you see your inventory building up, it means, oops, I've got too much stuff. People aren't buying it. And you start to slow down how much stuff you're producing. So we see that households are not buying stuff. Uh-oh, if they're not buying it, they're not spending money. And the business says, wait a minute, my inventory's piling up. I don't need to make any more stuff because I'm not getting paid for it. And now they slow down how much they're making. They go, wait, if I'm not producing as much stuff because my inventory's building up, I don't need to employ as many workers so they can cut that. And then they're not paying for them. And then the workers are like, oh, crap, I just got laid off. And if they get laid off, they don't get paid. And then they don't spend money. And then the business doesn't make money. And they lay off more people. And those people don't spend money. And what can happen is that we get this nasty spiral thing happening. And that's when our economy really gets in a bad way, which is kind of where we are right now. It's been worse. But the circular flow is useful in terms of looking at how some of this can happen. If money does not move, that's bad. If the money moves too fast, that's bad too. That means the economy is too hot. Maybe we need to slow it down a little bit. Okay. So again, it is a simplification. It does leave a couple of things out. All we've got here are firms interacting with households. We don't have firms interacting with other firms. We don't have households interacting with other households. Those are pieces of the economy that are not represented here. In this diagram, we're leaving out the piece that usually goes right here in the middle, which is government. We'll add government later. We don't need to overcomplicate this to start with. So yes, it does leave some pieces out, but it's useful in terms of getting an idea of how everything is connected. And it can be really, really good for that. So make sure you understand how the pieces fit together. Money goes clockwise. Resources and stuff counterclockwise. You have the factor market, the product market, and firms and households interacting through those two. 